The Greek islands is a place I fantasized about visiting for many years. So this summer, I'm giving myself two weeks to explore them. We are in Oya, which is on the north side of the islands. I'm landing in Santorini, where I'll spend the first few days. We're gonna hike up to the top to ancient Thera. Then for eight days, along with a small group of six and our captain Fotis, we'll be boarding the serendipity that'll take us to seven Greek islands, starting from Santorini and ending in Mykonos. This is home for the week. Friends are up. It'll be a dream come true being away at sea from Santorini to Mykonos, sailing the Greek islands. We got dolphins! There is a World War II jet fighter plane. We're gonna go catch the Temple of Apollo. I can tell I'm gonna love this place. Yes. All right, I'm officially in love with Greece. Everything about this place is amazing. This is paradise. What more could you ask for? So I first started having the idea of doing more sailing trips back in 2021 when I had my first experience doing an overnight in Turkey. We have all of this to ourselves at night. It's gonna be pretty friggin' sweet. And again, most recently in Belize when I did a three day, two night over the Belize Barrier Reef. We got dinner, barracuda. And those were such great experiences that I thought, you know, I gotta do more of that. And for years, I romanticized about going to Greece and thought, wouldn't it be nice to sail the Greek islands? <laughs> it sounds great. But if you don't already know, Greece is incredibly expensive. Just look at this place. I mean, it just screams luxury. Particularly in August when it's peak season and hotels can run you hundreds of dollars a night. And so if you watch my channel, you would know that I don't do luxury style travels, although I would like to try that at some point. So any sponsors? But I also wouldn't say that I'm a budget style traveler either. Although I have done that, I would say I'm somewhere in the middle. And so the way I'm planning this trip to kind of deflate some of the costs is that I'm staying at a hostel in Santorini for the first three days. Once the cruise starts, that'll be all inclusive except for dinners. And for what I want out of this trip, I think this is the best financial and scenic solution for me to see a good chunk of the islands without having to think about the extra expenses of flights, ferries, renting cars, and accommodations. Now I will say this, my biggest concern is gonna be the entertainment factor because I tend to lean towards the fast paced adventure style of travel and this is more like sailing, swimming, and chilling. So I don't know how that's gonna play out on camera, but I don't mind any style of travel as long as it gets me out in the world. But if you like that kind of thing, then maybe this is the video for you. Or if you're just curious about Greece, then sit back and relax because I'm gonna show you what it's like to be on the Greek islands. I'm excited for this one. My trip is a total of 13 hours with a layover in Washington, D.C. before arriving in the capital of Greece. All right, we're in Athens now, so one more flight to go. From Athens, it was just a 45 minute flight to Santorini. From the airport, I'll then take the local bus to Fira, the area I'll be staying in. Okay, 160 so we have made it to Fira, which is only a 10 minute ride on the local bus and a three minute walk to the hostel where I'm staying. All right, welcome to Santorini. I've got four days here, a couple of sites that I want to see. Today I'm just going to make it a chill day just by going to the main square, get my bearings, look around a bit, maybe grab something to eat. No idea where I'm going, but I'm going to go down this little narrow street here, just wander around. Everything's like a labyrinth here. You could definitely get lost in these small little streets. Okay, this is definitely the shopping district, but I'm not looking to shop right now. Let's work our way down to this street here. Wow, check this out. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, hello. Whoa. Man, you don't see that every day. They come in packs. My yeah. guess is the tourist one that I'm seeing. Yeah, I saw them down there earlier on the terrace. I saw some cable cars earlier, and the gentleman I was just speaking to said that there's a few point over here to check them out. It's 
it's always weird asking random strangers to take photos and videos of you, but it's the only way you can get these shots sometimes. My center? I'm good? Yes, you're good. It's, it's a bit touristy here, but I don't mind it. I mean, there's a reason why these places are tourist attractions, and that's because they look amazing. Just look at this place. And to be honest with you, I don't mind seeing such a big crowd here. It's good to be amongst people, and it feels good that things feel back to normal, you know? Santorini, you have been very impressive on day number one. Gyros are a Greek staple, and as often as I've had them, I've been saying it completely wrong the entire time, as they're correctly pronounced Yido. Welcome, Sodorini. I'm happy to be here. It's my first day in Greece. Ah, welcome, Sodorini, my friend. Thank you. First meal here. I'm settling on this. These guys are awesome. Take care, guys. Opa, ciao. Take care. <laughs> that was delicious. Really cool guys, and new subscribers. Making progress here. Santorini, day number two, but first day and a full day here exploring. I'm here in uh, Parisa. I actually changed hostels yesterday to a place called Santorini Breeze. Um, it's a little bit closer to this area, and the first thing we're going to check out is a place called Ancient Hathera. It's like some kind of like Roman ruins, and there's like a hike up to the mountains to go see it. And I am joined by Abby and Brogan, who I met last night randomly at the hostel when I overheard Abby talking about her work, and it turns out that she's also a stunt performer in the UK. And how cool is that? You travel halfway around the world and you meet someone in the same industry as you. So yeah, I invited them to come hike with me, and so they're joining me. You guys want to take a donkey up there? Yeah. Apparently you could take a donkey up here. It smells like it. This is just gorgeous. It still looks like there's a long ways to go. Top. We made it! Wow, look at that view. That is something else. I didn't introduce you to the group. That's Abby. Hello. <laughs> and that's Brogan over there. So I want to get to this point here. Because I think it's up there. Yeah, let's try to get to that point. Are you worthy to be the go. female Thor? Ready. She's worthy. Now don't drop it on your toes. <laughs> Located on top of Mesa Vuno is the highest peak of the island. Dorian colonists, who were one of four ethnic groups of ancient Greece, discovered this location in the 9th century BC, naming it Thera after their leader, Theras. Looks like we have a bird or some kind of falcon and a lion. The city was inhabited till the Byzantine period and discovered during large excavations between 1896 and 1902. <laughs> She's spry. The city was a strategic location between the north and south coast. With the building of two roads and ports, Dorian's enabled control of the southeastern Aegean Sea. All right, there's a little stand over here for cold drinks. Where were these guys when we needed them this morning? <laughs> Good views at the top. Beautiful day today. Headed back down, put the camera away because it's just too dangerous. Got the phone out right now. And yeah, that's it. That's the end of the day for me. Well, Bright and early to take a stroll down Parisa Beach, which is about a five minute walk from the hostel that I'm staying at, to enjoy all of this. And this is the first time I've ever been on a black sand beach. If you can see it, check it out. It's like volcanic sand. Pretty cool. Later that afternoon, I met up with Abby and Brogan for a chill day relaxing at the beach and to do some snorkeling. <laughs> I guess that's the proper way of getting in. 
as opposed to stumbling in like I will. So this is all lava beneath me, so it's very, very rocky to get in. Oh, here we go. It's smooth now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> It's just hard to see them because they kind of camouflage with the uh, the sand. You just have to kind of stay still and pay attention. Ah, Christ, that's hot. Ah, that's hot. hot, hot. Ah. <laughs> hot, 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 hot. Ah, ah. You needed your encouragement. Burning. Okay, some street corn here. Apparently, it's amazing. Abby says it's amazing. Yeah, Same thing. Yeah, yeah. All that good stuff. You can get the next one. Okay. Oh, look at that beauty. Yeah, no, <laughs> Salt, garlic, and butter. Amazing. And the Greek flag. Nice touch. The next morning was a bus ride to another part of the island. It's been a fun few days hanging out in Santorini, but now it was time to start a new adventure. Good morning from Santorini. We are in Oya, which is on the north side of the island. Only took about 25 minutes to a Maori fish tavern. The only difficult thing was that you have to walk through the center of town through these narrow alleys and cobblestone streets in the middle of tourism. And doing that with the suitcases <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't easy getting here. This is challenging. Lugging around a suitcase on cobblestone roads, it's not easy. He's got the right idea. This is where we're going to have our orientation, where we get to meet our captain and of course our shipmates who are going to be joining me on this tour because this is it. This is the beginning of our eight day Greek island cruise. We boarded a charter taking us to our actual boat where we introduced ourselves and the man who looks like Bradley Cooper and Fabio had a love child, that's Fotis. He'll be our captain. We'll be sailing for the next eight days, taking us through seven Greek islands. The name of the boat is Serendipity. Cool. I love this name. This boat has five cabins. Every cabin has a shower with toilet and a sink. This is home for the week. Fotis has already given us tasks to help out, which is great because it makes you feel like you're part of the crew. You know, from a distance, it kind of looks like snow-capped mountains, but they're actually little towns and cities. Ah, oh, this is so exciting. He then spent some time explaining some of the parts of the boat that we'll be helping out with. This is the main sail, and in the front is ten. Call it ten. That's not so. One, two, three, four times here and here. This is another break. Now we can open this one and we are safe. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear me because it's so windy, but the first stop for today is the island of Eos, which you can see way out there in the distance. And it should take about three hours to get there. the supermarket on your right hand. Oh, I'm going blind over here. Sun's just about to set. But welcome to Eos. This is seems like a quiet little fishing town, except for that horn that just honked. We just stopped it off here to pick up some provisions, some groceries. And then from there we will take the bus to go to town, to Hora. Hora is the capital. And then right now we just got some free time to explore around. Captain Poodle. Hey. Mike, Tammy and I decided to split up to wander around the island of Eos before meeting back and heading to town for our first dinner as a group.
Take care, man. <laughs> All right, I'm officially in love with Greece. Everything about this place is amazing. I love these streets, I love these narrow alleys. Pork chop. Right here. Second pork chop. Bradley Cooper. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my god. That's like Fred Flintstone size, my friend. Oh, this is gonna be fantastic. I'm stuffed. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good morning from EOS, day number two. Woke up at 6 30 in the morning. Slept pretty good. I thought it was going to be hot, but there was a nice breeze coming into the window. So it was a really good sleep. Last night over dinner, the group really had a chance to gel. And I think we got a really good group going. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun this week. Anyway, we're leaving here at 9 a.m. So gonna start up some breakfast and then yeah, off to the next island. The cruise ships are coming in. Thankfully, we're leaving uh, pretty soon. Beautiful. That was a nice little explore around. We only had about 20 minutes before we take off. So TL and I just uh, went up the hill to visit the little church that was there. There she is. Say hi, TL. Hello. <laughs> and that's it. We got to go back on the boat into our next island. Photography at its finest. So it's getting these. It's hard to see it because the sun's shining with these, these weird sunspots. So it just blocked. See those? Great. I did my duty. Now you can put the fenders up, guys. I am so mesmerized by how blue this water actually is. And the backdrop is just. You can see islands in the background like really faint. It kind of looks like a water painting. Because the waters are so calm and there are barely any waves, the water is just like this creamy blue. It just doesn't even seem real. I've never seen water like this before. And yeah, I feel like I'm on a true adventure like Pirates of the Caribbean or the Goonies. Fotis has been super cool, even gave me my first sailing tips and let me steer for a bit. Okay. slowly approaching our second island, Herakia, which means female Hercules, and it is part of the small Cyclades. The small Cyclades are a complex of 32 islands within the Aegean Sea, only four of which are inhabited, with Heraclea being the largest at a whopping 18 square kilometers. Guys, you are very lucky because this is one of the best places of this bay because it's not windy. When it's windy here, you cannot enjoy it, but now it's really beautiful. Enjoy! <laughs> there is a World War II, World War II? World War II jet fighter plane somewhere around here. We're gonna go check it out right now. There you go. World War II jet fighter plane. Because Mike, you're late to the show. Did you see it? Oh, yes, it's, going to. it's right here. It's a German plane. Oh, okay. I can get about 20 feet before my ears start to hurt. But that gentleman over there went down all the way to the bottom, 30 feet. That was impressive, man. He went down there for like a good two minutes. Yeah. And he was all the way at the bottom. <laughs> Probably. All right, here comes the IG model. 
Go ahead, go for it. This is very staged. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Great quick little swim spot, the fighter plane was a nice bonus, but now it's off to Heraklia. I need some help here with the rope. Or stop. The wind comes from here. From the side is the fastest way to sail. Guys, over there is Amorgos. We go tomorrow in this island. At the back is Naxos. And here we have Heraklia, Skinusa, Keros, and more uh, the bag is Pufonisi and Donusa. So, these islands here are small cyclades. Here, you don't have to do a lot of things. The, the place is very small, but it's very chill. You know, it's just relaxing. And also, you have another choice. If you go uh, left, there is a road. Uh, behind the trees there is a road and if you go left about 20-30 minutes on foot you will find another bay all right new location new bay to swim in can't tell you the name of it because i can't pronounce it properly but this is where we're staying for tonight <laughs> cute kids this is the life quiet little bay very few people here in the middle of a greek island not a cloud in sight what more could you ask for ah i found the warm spot not what you think. We were headed in search of the other bay while also getting to explore the town. Oops, I think I just started mass. Better get out of here. Oh, look at this. We made our way back and joined in conversation as Fotis began explaining the meaning of the Greek flag. Uh, before we didn't have uh, this flag, we had only the cross, okay. the white cross with blue. And after the revolution, we, ca we, have this, we had this flag. The red is uh, for the blood of the, of the uh, uh, soldiers, and the white is for something else. That remember. means freedom or death. Nice place. As a non-food expert, my meal and cheesecake could only be expressed in this depiction of the very cliché food vlogger dramatization. This is the Italian way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best you can ever have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sure. Starting early again on another blue beautiful morning to now make our way to Amorgis, which should take a relaxing three and a half hours. such a peaceful time sailing swimming sailing swimming I'm losing track of time we've had nothing but calm waters clear skies and now we just stopped up at this place to swim and then we're gonna head to our third island which is the Margos. anyway I'm gonna go for a swim now well you don't see much in terms of aquatic life but regardless it's still some of the clearest water I've ever seen in my life and I saw nasally let's try to make it to that beach over there Can go. It's pretty awesome. Like there's no one here. Well, except for that gentleman. Walk like a duck in his fence. Actually, I learned something from Mike. Walking what was backwards. it from you? Walking backwards. Yeah. That's how you do it. Whoa, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just not like that. All right, back to the boat. Anchored. Welcome to Amorgos. I can tell I'm gonna love this place. See the monastery and also go to see the town. It's beautiful. Especially this time. Of the year. You need help, fireman? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so this island's 
quite bigger than the other ones we've been to. We want to get to the center of town and then we're going to go check out a monastery, which is pretty far away from here. So what we're doing is we're going to rent a car, but I think we need to rent a car and a buggy. I want to ride on the buggy. President, this is Cornish Nutur. It's just a short drive to the monastery, but first we'll be doing a walking tour of the town. I can see why this is Fotis' favorite island. I mean, it's, it's just gorgeous. Mike, where do you think the girls went? I don't know, there's nice pottery here. They probably went in there. Oh, let's just go check. Oh, there they are. Oh, yeah, just right there, shopping. Go figure. Yamas. 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 This video is sponsored by Duck. <laughs> so this right here on the other side of this side of the building. Okay. Cut down and that'll take us to the next loop back out and around. up to the monastery. Don't know how many steps this is, but it's the traditional Greek uneven, very dangerous steps. And you can easily just twist an ankle. <laughs> I've twisted my ankle like twice coming up here. <laughs> Built in 1017, the monastery of Hozoviotisa is the most important religious monument and pride of Amorgis. Constructed into the face of the cliff, it was created as an ode to the grace of Panagia, known as the Virgin Mary, the saint protector of the island. Almost there. This is spectacular. And the views down below aren't too bad either. More stairs? I thought we made it. More stairs. Great. You shopping, Mike? Pants Apparently we have to wear pants to go inside the monastery. We're wearing shorts, so... Hey, those will fit you, probably. Well, at least I get the stylish ones. That's good. <laughs> 300 meters above the Aegean Sea, the views were just breathtaking. Once inside, no photos or videos allowed, which I should have known better. Oh, whatever, it's not allowed. Oh. There's no video or photos in the main chamber, but we could, we could take photos of you here. The rooms, the two chambers, very small, but very nice. I wish there was a guide there to kind of tell you who you were looking at, because I had no idea. Besides that, I think it was worth it just for the views alone. So overall, good day. We made our way back just as the sun began to set. <laughs> we're, we're here to steal your money. We found out later that this day happened to be a major Greek holiday and the evening would be filled with festivities. So of course, we went to go check it out. So today is August the 15th, and it's one of Greek's biggest holidays. But I wouldn't call it a festive one because it's kind of like celebrating the death of the Virgin Mary, which is not festive, but if you see the people, they are celebrating. Represented. <laughs> the 
After a few days, I definitely feel like we're getting into a groove as far as chores and daily boat life. All right, good morning. So last night's festivities went on until about five in the morning. We called the quiz about 12.30, but they kept playing music till like five in the morning. You can hear it from the cabin. So even so, we still managed to get a couple of hours sleep. And now we are headed out to Naxos, which is gonna be the biggest Greek island we're going to, and also the furthest journey we're doing. And what Fotos is saying is gonna take about five hours to get there. So we got a long day of sailing, chilling, and cruising ahead of us. Now we will go here for swimming. Then we will go there and we go from the west side of the island. So from here to the port, we need about three, three and a half hours. It was another beautiful swim spot before we made our way to Naxos. Five point four. Five point four. Bad form. I give it a four point. Ooh. That fall gives you a nine. Too big of a splash. I'll give you about a six. Six. I give my five point six. His legs <laughs> separated at the end. My legs separated again. Damn it. One. <laughs> Judge. <laughs> For hilarity. Tough judges. Drinking a beer in the ocean. This trip is brought to you by Mithos. <laughs> the finest the of Greek beer. The beer of the gods. The beer of gods. <laughs> I was on deck, basically snoozing, when I heard Fotis yelling, Look! Look! And then... <laughs> we got dolphins! Oh! He's on his side. We got two. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> come, come back. Come back. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Good catch. Two dolphins will be alongside us. Magical moment. All right, Mike, TK, and I uh, wanted to walk around the town. We got about as far as two minutes and realized it's boiling, so we stopped in here to get some ice cream and cool off. Should I try it's it? so good. It's really good. Coconut? I just want to lean on and go. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You can really taste the coconut. That's really good. Naxos is the largest island of the Kiklades, but with a population of 18,000, it still managed to feel cozy and quaint. That's gorgeous. This whole area is like a dream. Alleyways, like cobblestone streets, it's like everywhere you turn is something beautiful to look at. Gotcha. You definitely have a job. You got it right. <laughs> out here and I would love to take a dip in there but we're gonna go catch the Temple of Apollo. Lydimus, the tyrant of Naxos, began building his Temple of Apollo during his rule in 530 BC. It was never completed as he was overthrown by a Spartan army in 524 BC. Today, the lintel of the temple still stands and is one of the chief landmarks of Naxos. <laughs> Perfect moment to check this out. 
Sunset's happening, lighting's really good. Incredible sight. I mean, it's only one arc, but overlooking the city, it's just really beautiful. Gotta love this place, as if you couldn't tell already, but this place is just undeniably beautiful. This has been one of the best trips I've done, and I'm not even done yet. It was another calm day at sea, and to set the mood, Fotis decided to indulge us with some of his favorite Greek hits. Stay there and not become night, because it's very hard for those that they feel lonely. Great day. <laughs> very emotional. Good morning, day number five from the Serendipity on this Greek island adventure. And right in front of me is Setos. I don't know if you can see it because it's so faint in the background. It just looks so dreamy. But we're going to be spending two days here, which is great. It's the first place we're actually spending more than one day, which means we get to explore more of the towns, which I really, really love. They're quaint, small, cute, charming, antique. And yeah, it's been really, really fun. Sailing from Naxos to Syros will take us three hours. Beautiful swim spot over here. Now we make our way around the island to the port. We had two days here, so once we arrived, we pretty much stayed local. We enjoyed another great dinner in the evening, and in the morning, we all decided to wake up at 7 a.m., rent taxis to the center of town, and spend the entire day sightseeing. City in Morocco. At the church bells. The church of Ayos y Orios, or St. George, was built in 1208. Between the 13th and 16th century, it's been destroyed and rebuilt three times and continues to be the religious center for Catholic Greeks. Definitely beautiful, but has the smell of cat shit. I guess we've come at the right time because the entire town is completely empty. Yeah, we're getting to explore it with no tourists around. I don't know if that's normally like this, but I guess we're just really lucky. We stopped at a boutique cafe for breakfast, tucked away within the narrow alleys. Right away, right kitty. <laughs> we may have found a secret gem. I don't know if this town gets much tourism. Maybe it's not as popular as I say maybe Mykonos, but we have the entire town to ourselves. And it's already like 11 a.m. Look at this, beautiful. We're definitely in the center of town now. <laughs> These streets, I love it. We've been walking around the city all morning. It's boiling hot. And now, we're gonna take a dip down there. Cooling off in Asteria Beach in Romopoli was the perfect way to end the day. This is so much cooler than the beach, much more unique. Got the church over there, that's surrounded by cliffs and little towns all around me. One of the best days of the trip so far. Definitely one of my favorite islands. Good morning from Syros. Last day here, and now we're off to Mykonos. Our Greek island tour is coming to an end, and I've been having such a blast. I've been really happy that the group that we had is uh, more on the chill side, which uh, was perfect for this trip. So I'm not really sure how this is gonna play out on the film, but 
for me, it is, it's been a different kind of travel, but I've loved it. It's really windy, but if you can hear me, this is our swim spot for today. And behind us in the distance is Mykonos. We have an unfortunate dead turtle. That's sad. It smells pretty bad too. We're approaching Mykonos and we got the sails up. The seas have been so calm that we rarely have the chance to put up the sails. And right now, TL, who actually has sailing experiences, are uh, taking over right now, which is really cool. So she's getting us to the port of uh, Mykonos right now. Oof, feeling a little bit nauseous right now. The boat is rocking. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But what Fotis has been saying is you can only do it with under a certain knot. And I think this boat requires at least eight knots to do that. So yeah, we're getting a little bit of wind now. So sails are up. Windy. It makes sense. Make it the island of winds. <laughs> that's why. That's why my world is always so windy. All right, last day in Mykonos, and to be honest, I haven't really seen much of Mykonos. It's just been so hot that I've stayed on the boat, and actually most of us have stayed on the boat and just kind of relax and chill to guess enjoying the final moments. But we will get to see a bit of Mykonos later on today. We'll have our final dinner as a group down that way, where the center of town is, and that's pretty much it. This tour ends tomorrow at 10 a.m., but I'm leaving at 9 a.m. because right over there it will be the ferry boat that I have to take back to San Trinini. That's it. Back to uh, reality it will be. It was a short water bus to the center of town. Wow, we're in the center of town now. This is beautiful. Again, another stunning little town. Charming. It just says thank you. It's a money holder. So, oh, that's oh nice. perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to try this. Uh, Susukakia. Mama Susukakia. Mama Susukakia. We enjoyed our last meal and began sharing our favorite moments of the trip. Um, I really like the burgers. Everybody like a morgue. Yeah, yeah. so Two days in a morgue. Easy. Guys, have the yamas. Cheers. Cheers. Have the yamas. Yamas. It was a wonderful last evening together. In the morning, I said my goodbyes to the group and to Fotis and was off to catch the morning ferry back to Santorini. This had been an amazing adventure, but now it was time to go back home to New York. Or was it? Hey there, I'm back. Actually, I never left. I'm still in Greece. I'm in Athens right now, and because I have a few extra free days, I thought, why not come to the capital city? So I was thinking, maybe I could make a second video. That was the initial plan anyway, but to be honest, I didn't find Athens as visually appealing compared to what I just experienced. And though I did enjoy visiting the ruins and sites, the weather did not cooperate. Going from not a drop in the sky for 11 days to raining all four days, pretty much put an end to the idea of a second video. Another travel day in Athens ruined by rain. Day number two ruined. I think I'm just gonna call this video quits. Filming this adventure didn't come without its challenges. For one, Greek summers are extremely hot in August, as I may have mentioned once, maybe twice in this video. It's just been so hot, it's boiling hot. I realize it's boiling. So it's something to consider if you're planning on coming. It's also very windy, rendering a majority of my audio unusable. Is this too windy? Is it too windy? The wind is crazy right now. Eliminating most of my dialogue, which made it quite challenging to build a story editing this video. But these issues were minuscule setbacks when compared to the overall experience I had. It was truly one of the most relaxing, enjoyable, and visually stunning trips I've ever done. 
Finally seeing Greece for myself, after years of imagining vicariously through Instagram photos, I have to say it exceeded all my expectations. Greece, you're winning my heart. So if you're looking to see a beautiful country with some of the bluest waters, eat some of the best foods, and meet some of the nicest, most welcoming people, then save your money, sell a kidney or two, and make it out there. In all seriousness, do it. Without a doubt, you won't regret going. Thank you, Fotis, for an amazing, memorable adventure and for being an awesome captain. And to the group and everyone I met on this trip, I'm so happy we got to share this adventure together. It's been a blast. Until the next one. Now it's a motorcycle. I haven't really seen much of me because uh, now it's plain. I can't, I can't win. This bird chase is brought to you by Kaiser Beer. <laughs> the most refreshing beer in all of Monopoly.